So you've done your research and selected your overhead crane. You've picked your manufacturer and cut the check. Now it's time to install your overhead crane. Welcome back to Cranes 101. Hey guys, Devin here from Mazel Companies, and today we're gonna to talk about the process for installing an overhead crane. In this video, we'll cover what happens before the installers get there, the entire process of installing a crane from start to finish, and then what they do after the fact to make sure that your crane does what you want it to do the way that you want it to do it. So if you've been with us for a while, you might remember Ryan Willoughby, one of our field service technicians. He did the video about the overhead crane installation cost. He's back again to talk about the installation process this time with just covering how long this should take. The crane installation process should generally take between two and 10 days. It could take a month. It depends on uh, how complex this installation is gonna be. A couple days sometimes on a small Gorbel system, some, some uh, pre-manufactured systems, say a two ton push pull it might only take a couple days. Now I know that between two days and one month seems like a huge margin of time, but if you think about it, each overhead crane is different, and then each facility that they install it in is different. But Ryan also told me that there's a bunch of things that need to happen before the installers even get to your facility. The installers want to go to the site and see what they got to work with, what obstacles got to work around, meet with the customers, see where they're going to stage their product when they arrive, what kind of equipment they need, how they're going to get into the facility, how big the overhead doors are, if there's pits in the floor, if there's equipment, uh, machines, conveyor belts that need to be moved around. You need to cover all this stuff with the, with the point of contact so they know what they can do to prep before you arrive and, and make it smooth. So have you ever had somebody ask you to house it for them, only they didn't tell you where the key was or that they had a pet pit bull that may have gotten loose and bit you in the face? Well, installation is the same thing, sans the dog. The more information that you tell the installers ahead of time, the better prepared they can be to get there and get right to work. But how much should you expect to discuss with them ahead of time? The contact between the manufacturer and the installer will depend on the complexity of the project. If it's a really simple project that's uh, pretty straightforward, it might only be every couple weeks that, that you contact them. But if it's a real complex project where there's a lot of variables involved and a, and a lot of uh, managers involved, uh, it could be a daily meeting. So how exactly does your overhead crane get into your building? Well, as Ryan tells me, there's a lot to it. The type of equipment that installers usually have to use to put the cranes in uh, varies depending on the layout of the land, obviously. But if you have overhead cranes available, sometimes you can use those overhead cranes to unload the trucks and, and put up columns. If not, you've got to bring in a mobile crane. Uh, sometimes you've got to use rigging above head just, just to uh, get stuff into place. Lifts, obviously, are part of the job. Aerial lifts, uh, sensor lifts, articulating lifts. So understandably so, it takes a heck of a lot of gear to get an overhead crane up in the air in your facility. But the good news is, if you have your own gear and you have your own workers, you might be able to save some money. Generally, we bring our own equipment. Uh, Customers can get a break on, on the price a lot of times if they have their own lifts, uh, uh, forklifts available, they have JLGs, if they have a mobile crane on site or if we can use their overhead crane, that saves obviously a lot of money. If they have welders, generally we like to use their welders and not our welders just so we don't have to hook up to their power supply. And the more they have available, the, the better it is for us. So if you can, use your team, your own equipment, and you'll be able to save quite a bit of money. But I also wanted to know what installers are gonna look for when they actually get their equipment set and they're ready to start. Generally, they wanna look at headroom, accessibility, how they're gonna get in the building, uh, what equipment they gotta maneuver around, where their power source is, what equipment they're gonna use, how they're gonna rig it, just whatever obstacles they might have to work around, pits in the floor, uh, like I said, conveyor belts that they have to work around, things that can't be moved, uh, piping, conduit, uh, duct work that they have to work around. So, fun fact, installers are pretty great at their jobs. And I can say that because I talk to a lot of them several times a week. So when I was talking to Ryan about the different obstacles that installers may face, I was wondering about how they combat that. Uh, generally, installers have been around for a while, they've been doing this for a while, they know ways to get around all those obstacles. Uh, it's best if the customer can eliminate the obstacles the best they can, but if they can't, uh, if we have to uh, push a piece of conduit out of the way or we need to get around, work around a pit or a conveyor belt, we have ways of doing it. Headroom issues, obviously, we deal with on a regular basis, and we can, we can find ways to get that crane up in the air. So you want your overhead crane for a very specific reason. It's why you bought it. What I wanted to know was about accountability. How do you verify that what you want this overhead crane to do can actually be done the way that you want it to be done? 
And what Ryan told me is that there's a lot of things that they do to verify in front of you that it will do what you want it to do. Before the installation occurs, the installer will meet with the customer and the manufacturer to verify that the crane system itself is gonna operate the way the customer intends it to operate. So if they want so much lift, it gets the proper lift, proper speeds, it has the right hook approach, uh, clearances running down the runway, they got the right span, basically all the bells and whistles that they needed to have to, to do the process that they needed to do. All right, that's before it gets installed, but what about after it gets installed? After the installation has occurred, we we'll want to do a, a load test of 110% of the load to verify that it'll statically hold the load and there's no brake slippage or anything like that. And then we want to run the crane all directions, full range of motion to verify that clearances are okay and that there's no creaks and there's no pops and everything's running the way it's supposed to run. Well, that's well and fine if everything goes well, but everybody's had a bad day, mistakes happen. What happens if they test it and something goes wrong? If we notice something during the load test that's abnormal, we'll have to investigate that, obviously. Sometimes go back to the manufacturer to come up with a solution. Uh, for instance, if there's too much deflection, if we hear uh, rail popping that, that's, that's significant, uh, maybe we need tiebacks in, in that area of the runway system. Generally, that'll go back to the manufacturer to redesign that area. Clearances, obviously, if there's something's not clear, we might have to have ductwork moved or have to uh, modify the trolley deck or end truck to uh, compensate for that. One of the last things that Ryan and I talked about was the importance of agreeing upon a date and then meeting it. And I'm gonna tell you to listen to every word that Ryan tells you about what happens if you're not ready for the installers when they get there. Lots of factors go into that date. Uh, renting equipment, obviously, uh, per diem for the employees out there on the job site. If there's a hold up due to the customer not being ready, everybody's sitting there, trucks sitting outside with the equipment on there. Everything's being rented. Everybody's getting paid and nothing's getting done. Obviously the timeline's not gonna get met and that's gonna cost quite a bit more than, than expected. Now I can't imagine how bad that conversation would suck. I'm a time freak, I go nuts about it. If I'm not 10 minutes early or 15 minutes early, I have my old panic attacks. It's just how I'm wired. And I know that for me, to be a time freak is all about what you control, how early you start, what you can do to prepare yourself to make sure that there are no surprises. And that's exactly what I wanted to know from Ryan. What can you, the customer, do to make sure that you are as ready as possible for the installers when they get there? There's things the customer can do to make this process go smooth. Uh, if you know you have a safety program that need, everybody needs to go through, you can have that set up with the safety guy. Uh, have doors free, clear of, uh, clear of equipment. Um, any areas that need to be cleared out, make sure they're cleared out. Um, if you need to have work permits or hot work permits, uh, have a guy set up ready to handle that. Have everybody aware that that area is gonna need to be worked on that day and that uh, everybody needs to be out of the way and you can come up with a plan on how you're gonna load equipment, unload equipment, and stage all your product uh, during this process. So hopefully, this video was able to better help you understand the process for installing an overhead crane. If you haven't already, check out the rest of our Cranes 101 series. There's a ton of videos there. And while you're there, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything else that we make going forward. At Mozilla Companies, we have a team of highly trained lifting specialists and field service technicians that want nothing more than to help you figure out your lifting needs as soon as possible and help you with the install. If you're still not sure what overhead crane that you need, the link above will take you to our 10 things to consider when buying an overhead crane checklist. It's 100% free, you don't have to pay for it. It's a resource that was built with you in mind to make sure that you're ready to go when you're ready to buy an overhead crane. So if you still have questions about your forthcoming lifting project, don't hesitate to reach out and schedule a lifting consultation. We'd be happy to help you out however we can. And thank you for watching.